There is perhaps nobody more qualified today in the field of early railway history prior to the 1860s than Anthony Dawson. In six years, he's managed to write 16 books about railways and his YouTube channel on historical lines weekly runs people through the basics on early locomotives and technology prior to the mid-Victorian era where there's an ocean of readily available academic material. So who better to document the design, history, discovery, rebuilding, renaissance and preservation of one of the most beloved early steam locomotives ever made? On first impression, you could be forgiven for thinking that Lion, the story of the real Titfield Thunderbolt, isn't very comprehensive. At 96 pages long and sized roughly a little over A5, it's by no means the biggest book ever published, nor is it Dawson's most comprehensive book to date, but it puts its compactness to excellent use by packing all of those pages full of comprehensive facts, figures, details, anecdotes and testimonies both previously known and never seen before. As the title suggests, it's a full historical documentation of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway 042 built in 1838 by Todd Kitson and Laird of Leeds, which ran until 1859 under Grand Junction Railway and later London and Northwestern Railway ownership, after which it was sold to the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board and ended up working as a pumping engine in the docks complex until her historical significance was recognised in the early 1920s. The engine was then recovered in 1928 and restored for use on special occasions in 1930 before making a name for herself in three movies, the last of which becoming a worldwide classic for rail fans. Since then, the engine has had one more stint of operation in preservation before being retired for good in the late 1980s. There have been other books featuring Lion, for sure, but chances are they wouldn't have told you her history between her withdrawal in 1959 and her rediscovery in a Liverpool pump house in the 1920s, nor would they have referred to her as a luggage engine, as befitted the Liverpool and Manchester Railway's terminology of the period. Events involving Lion are documented to contextualise the influence of the engine's design. There's an interesting one involving Lion as a banking engine on a 250-ton goods train while the piloting patentee engine blew up the cause of the accident being attributed to the patentee tender coupling being directly linked to the firebox. Yikes. While Lion's tender was connected to the frames of the engine as is more common practice today, photographs and technical drawings help to explain the mechanics and specifications of the engine, though it may be possible for the non-mechanically minded to get lost with some of the technical jargon. Nevertheless, the details are explained with great clarity and emphasise the lengths that Dawson has gone to in his research. There are some particularly interesting close-ups of the engine's valve gear alongside some fascinating archive photographs of her 1980 overhaul. Probably the key thing that people will want to learn from this book is whether the locomotive that starred in one of the most beloved railway films of all time is in fact Lion or not. It's been talked about since the story went through the railway press in 2019, as it was in fact Dawson who went through what records remain of the locomotive's paper trail. It rediscovers just how much of Lion as we know her exists from her 1930 rebuild, replacement boilers being fitted in 1900 and 1865, and an 1841 rebuild, all of which would imply just how different the aesthetics of the engine are now from 1838. Furthermore, a crucial sale of an unnamed 042 being sold out of London and Northwestern ownership to the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board, which ended up in the pumping house where Lion was found, makes you question whether or not the engine is in fact one of the other age-old Liverpool and Manchester locos that just so happen to be 042s. But anyone who dismisses the theory as the railfans equivalent of whitewashing history can rest easy, as the results, perhaps to the book's discredit, imply that any changes may not be significant enough to constitute a change in identity of the engine as we know it, even though there are some interesting theories which are neither confirmed or denied along the way. If you have any interest in early railway technology, Lion specifically, or the Titfield Thunderbolt even more so, Lion, the story of the real Titfield Thunderbolt, is an essential and surprisingly intriguing read. It may be deceptive on first impression, but it's packed full of information that makes you wish it was more readily available before. Thanks for tuning in everybody. If you liked what you hear and you'd like to see more on the channel, then feel free to like, share, subscribe, discuss, contribute to my Patreon, and check out my range of merchandise at www.egmedia.co.uk forward slash shop. See you next time.